boy, oh boy, the Friday the 13th franchise keeps getting even worse and worse and worse. But there's always some enjoyment or some success within. There's always a there's always a diamond within the garbage or whatever the saying is. But anyway, Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. We're almost finished. Uh, I'm almost finished uh, reviewing all of the Friday the 13th. Uh, films uh, with you guys. Um, but here we have uh, Jason Voorhees, uh, and it's set seven years after the events of the previous film, and the plot follows a psychokinetic teenage girl who unwittingly releases Jason from his tomb at the bottom of Crystal Lake, allowing him to go yet another killing spree in the area. What a surprise. The New Blood was intended to have a higher standard of quality than that of the previous installments, with high-profile directors being considered to helm the project. Uh, Paramount sought a partnership with New Line Cinema to create a crossover film between Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, um, which would not come to fruition until New Lines bought the rights to the franchise, releasing which would, you know, the crossover would become Freddy vs. Jason uh, in 2000, which was released in 2003. Um, but yeah, after several failed concepts, screenwriter Daryl ha uh, Haney, um, Haney uh, suggested an idea akin to Jason versus Carrie, in which Jason would battle a teenage girl with psychokinetic, like, pretty much, she's a telepath, like, a psych, well, uh, well, um, the telekinesis, she has telekinesis superpowers, I, I almost said, like, a psychic, but I'm like, psychic read, is someone who reads your thoughts, not, like, move things with your object, which is what the character, which is what the girl does in this movie. But, uh, yeah. This is probably... Yeah. I mean, I don't know what, what else I can say with you guys. I mean, I, this idea of Jason, you know, fighting, um, you know, going against <laughs> fucking Carrie... A Carrie type character, it, it, it's stupid. I, I, I just, I don't understand. And I don't think, I don't think, you know, Jason takes Manhattan and like the future films, the future, you know, future films, you know, future installments of the series never brought back the care, brought back, uh, the girl with the tele, you know, the telekinetic abilities. It, it's just, it's something that they drop. I, I, this movie is just, yet, yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid and terrible. And the, the finale is weak. It has, you know, the, a new blood. Ha the new blood has a weak finale, with predictable. This film has predictable killings, and it ha it does have a misogynistic subtext on the entire Friday the Thirteenth series. Um, it, the plot line is repetitive. And to the point where this entire franchise has become tiresome and implausible with campers repeatedly coming to Crystal Lake despite the repeated slaughter of visitors. It's like, I don't know, man. It's like... This like horrific moments. I'm trying to like really think about this film. Sorry if I'm like pausing here and there. I I apologize for that. But I'm like really trying to mentally like repicture this film in my head and like really try to break it down. 
there's some graphic this film has some graphic mutilation there's some sex sequences it, uh, the character of uh, you know the, the the girl with the telekinetic you know superpowers um she's so one dimensional she she's was she was so one dimensional i to the point where i really didn't care about the character and the idea who um you know is the, the screenwriter daryl suggested the idea of jason versus carrie but unlike carrie you know uh uh which was uh played by uh the sissy um Spackick, Spackick. I don't. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. But anyway, um, but unlike Sissy, like we really care about the character of Carrie. You know, here, do any of us care about Tina? I, no, none of us do. I don't care. You don't care. We don't care about the characters, about the character of, of Tina. She's so one dimensional. She's just they're <laughs> so. This film is really, really is stupid and dumb. I don't know how much more I can take this. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have to say for Friday the 13th, The New Blood. It's yet, it's, this entire Friday the 13th franchise is just repetitive. It's stupid and it's tedious. And somehow, you know, they're successful. There's a fan base. People love you know, the character of Jason Voorhees, him just slaughtering characters. I, I I don't understand that, too. Like, people are getting slaughtered in Camp Crystal Lake, and yet these people are still going back there despite the slaughters. Like, do the news not exist in the Friday the 13th, like, series? Like, the entire franchise? Like, it's not, like, on CNN or some shit. Oh my God. I, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you guys. But anyway, that's all I have to say for Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. Um, We're going to have a fun time. I'm going to have a fun, a, a hilarious time reviewing Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Because that movie takes it, takes... Jason Takes Manhattan... The movie takes the film to a whole new, like, level of stupidity. That film, Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, but yeah, I... Thank you so much, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Uh, it would help me a lot if, you know... Thank you so much for your support, for your love, for your patience. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm very happy about that. And, uh... I'll see you guys in my next video.